welcome to the Spiral Up Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Michelle Weenie, a peak performance coach and business strategist dedicated to helping you see what's possible within you, the blind spots that are holding you back, and the solutions to ensure success and fulfillment without the hustle. I use my secret sauce of metaphysics, brain science, and scripture to work with God to manifest your ideal life and business. If you're ready to create massive forward momentum in your business and bust through the blocks that drag you down, join me on the Spiral Up journey and create the clarity, confidence, and consistency to become the CEO that lives your life by design. It's time to create the sustainable impact, income, and time freedom you desire faster. Now is the time to Spiral Up. Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Spiral Up podcast. I am your host, Dr. Lachelle Weemy. It is so much fun to talk to you guys today about something that has been coming up a lot this week. So I'm in the process of adding some more training inside of my signature Spiral Up program, and it's all around getting in sync with and connected to your higher power, your intuition, to know how to get into flow and ease when you're trying to get things done, how to trust your own discernment. Like, it's so freaking fun. I also happen to have a conversation with... One of my colleagues, who's another coach, and the two of us are studying universal law. I love to go through this. I've actually gone through the same book now probably five times. And every time I do it, it's like another piece of insight that is revealed to me. And Jan and I have so much fun talking and dialoguing about each of these universal laws and how they just start to come alive even more and how we're utilizing them. And so I want to give you guys some insight into some of the themes that I've noticed this week. And I want to be able to help you get out of the sake of hustle for the sake of hustling, for the grind to maybe get out of the subscription in your mind of I have to have blood, sweat, and tears to be successful and allowing yourself to fully receive the blessings with ease and flow from God who's trying to give it to you, right? The other thing that I totally noticed this week is that in my preparation for my courses that I'm recording, I was utilizing a book, one of my favorite books called Feel the Fear, Do It Anyway by Joyce, I'm sorry, um, Susan Jeffers. And the thing that she talked about in there so aligned well with this theme that I kept coming up that I can't wait to, to dive into it. But one of the things that I want to just mention is that I have been there, you guys. And so I want to know if you can relate to this, all right? So I'm going to give you a snapshot of what my life looked like prior to me quitting my full-time career, my my full-time anesthesia career, right? So I am not immune to hard work. I am not shy from digging my heels in and getting it done. And I truly believed that if I can just hustle and do everything that I can for three to five years, then it will all pay off in the long run. Now, I'm not saying that that's not true, but what I'm saying is, is that what if It doesn't have to be a hustle and grind for three to five years. And I'm not saying that we don't have to sacrifice some time or some effort and give up, you know, things. But what I'm saying is, is that if we subscribe to the belief that it has to be hard, that it, that, that hard work is, is 100% necessary and it's the only way to get success, then we are 100% creating that reality, whether we want to or not. All right. So I'm going to give you some, some insight. Tell me if this is something that you can relate to. Okay. So started my network marketing company. I was so freaking coachable because I had no idea what the heck I was doing. And I was tuning into my, my trainings every week. And I was executing the ideas that I got from these amazing leaders who were giving us insight on what was working for them and, and you know, how we could possibly grow our business. And so snapshot and she was a typical day for me. All right. I'd get up at four 30 in the morning to get my morning routine done. Then I would listen to personal development as I was getting ready and on my way into work. I'd get there about six 30 in the morning, get my operating room ready, start the day. And then somebody would come in to give me two 15 minute and one 30 minute break throughout the day. I had a list and habits built that I knew exactly what I was going to do to work on my business during those tiny snapshots of the day where I was given the opportunity to to work on my business. And rather than sitting in the workroom, you know, gossiping with my colleagues, I was literally sitting in the skyway that connected buildings with my laptop on my lap and my lunch next to me. And I was like just hustling, right? I was doing the thing. I would be done with my workday. 
exhausted, but that didn't stop me. So I'm like on my way home and I'm calling people, I'm connecting with teammates. I am, you know, talking to, to prospective clients. I'm following up with people. I'm taking advantage of every moment of my commute, get home. I'm having zoom meetings. I'm in networking groups. I'm doing all the things, you know, trying to fit in mom, wife and, and wife duty and Sometimes even after the kids went to bed, I was working again, like, honey, I got to get my stories in. Um, it's my non-negotiable, right? So then my husband would be sitting next to me as I was in bed, like, you know, and when I was starting to create stories, like they would take me freaking 45 minutes to get a, a little sequence done. And so then I'll look over at him and he's completely annoyed. And I, you know, finish up and we'd watch a little bit of, you know, 2020 and then we'd fall asleep and I would repeat the next day all over again. And I didn't have enough wisdom or discernment to know when things needed to be added to my plate, when things needed to be released from my plate, and when to say yes and no to things. So instead, what I would do is I would just add more to my plate. Oh, I just listened to that training and that's a great idea. I'm going to do that. Oh, I should now I should get on TikTok too. Oh, LinkedIn is the way to be. I'm going to add that too. Oh, I'm supposed to be doing a live every day. Okay, well, I better start doing that. Oh, maybe I should start a podcast. And now all of a sudden my plate is so full, so full. And I didn't have any space to breathe. I didn't have any space to receive, to dream, to allow flow to come in because I was stuck in the hustling for the sake of hustling, right? In my mind, I just needed to 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 grind and blood, sweat, and tears to, to sacrifice for now, for later. But I remember my husband saying to me one day, he's like, Lachelle, at what cost? Now, he wasn't saying that because he was going to leave me. He was saying that because he's like, honey, I want you to understand that you don't need to be so out of balance. You don't need to have your whole worth wrapped up in your to-do list. And I'd go to bed at night and I'd be frustrated because I hadn't gotten everything, you know, cross off my list. And I'd do the same thing again, seven days a week. And all I wanted was for me to be able to have that time freedom so that I could actually work on my business instead of having to do everything. And I wanted so badly for my business to grow and not for me to be able to quit my very healthy income in full-time anesthesia. But I was landlocked. I was already using every minute, every hour of the day that I had. And so I felt frustrated and defeated and it was exhausting. And one thing that I have to say, guys, if you're in this boat too, that chances are you're like me, where you've allowed the normal perception of how this is supposed to be and what is necessary to be successful, take away your peace. We, we see these amazing inspirational quotes that say something like, you know, success before work is, is only found in the dictionary, you know, and I'm not telling you that you don't do action, but what I'm telling you is, is that it doesn't have to be blood, sweat, and tears all the time. And what if it was possible for your dream clients to just come to you? What if it was possible that it didn't have to take months, years to, con to convince somebody to work with you? What if it literally just happened in an instant? I'm going to give you two examples of this that happened this week, okay? One of them was me. I had been really wanting to add another skill set to my arsenal to help my clients. And I wanted to be able to help them with another tool that is going to release subconscious blocks. All right. So what I've found is that when it comes to our business and, and manifesting, if we have lack of belief that it's possible, they, those cracks become essentially like big um, gorges that we can't pass through in, on our way to manifest. Right. So I really wanted to help people with another way to release subconscious beliefs that were holding them back. And I knew that that's what I wanted. And when you are in alignment with the frequency of the solution, the solution finds you. Now, I might have a skeptical friend that says, um, Lachelle, that's crap. You know, um, you know, social media, you know, targets people. So, you know, like that's why you saw that particular thing. 
I don't, I don't subscribe to that anymore. I believe that when I am at the frequency of what I want, then I expect that it's on its way to me. And sure enough, this, this post that I saw resonated with me. It was a woman who also loves universal law. She loves brain science. She loves all of the things that I do. And she was offering a training on subconscious belief release. So I watched it. It was in so alignment with everything that I do, loved what she had to say, and her signature technique is a perfect fit for what I wanted. So I booked my call with her, which was more of a formality. She didn't have to convince me of anything. She didn't have to sell me. There was no hard sell. I literally told her, I'm like, this is what I want. It sounds like this is in alignment. Where? What do I need to do? Can you send me a link? Whatever. Like she earned a couple thousand dollars with very little effort. She did her training, she put it out there, and she expected that people like me are going to find her. It was like that. Like in less than 15 minutes, she made it a couple grand and I got a solution that I wanted. Another example, one of my really good friends and former coaches, and I actually coach for her program from time to time, was... Um, filling up her, her spots in her mastermind. Now, this is not an inexpensive mastermind. It's like $25,000. So not a like, you know, a light, light investment. You have to oftentimes think about it. She had met a woman the day before and had told her about her program. And she's like, hey, Lachelle, would you mind talking to her, answering any questions? You've been both a client of mine and you're part of, you know, my mastermind program. Um, so would you mind talking to her, ask, answering some questions for her? I'm like, yeah, sure. No problem. Got on the phone with her, find out that she literally had just met Debbie the day before. And she didn't have the funds for this, but she just knew. And she just had a couple of questions for me that I answered very truthfully and transparently. And she's like, okay, sounds good. Debbie filled that spot and this gal got the, re the, the help that she needed, the help that she wanted. You guys, it doesn't have to be hard. And I'm telling you those two stories because I want you to know that it's possible. I want to create a little bit of healing in those cracks of unbelief. Now, when I was studying for, you know, or looking through my, my stuff and putting together my, my curriculum for my program, I came across this amazing law within Raymond Hollywell's book, Working with the Law, and it was the law of obedience. And the law of obedience basically says that when you are in harmony with the laws of the universe, then, and you're not going against the flow, things are going to, to work for you and to your advantage, all right? So I love telling this analogy. It's like my favorite quantum leap, you know, um, story. And it's the movie Finding Nemo, right? Where Marlon and Dory are, are looking for Nemo and they just keep swimming, just keep swimming. And they're, you know, just keep swimming with the attitude like, okay, we got to keep going. And then they come across Crush the Turtle and he's like, hey dudes, all you need to do is get into the EAC. The Eastern Australian Current literally shot them straight into Sydney without any more effort of their own. That's what quantum leaping does. It gives you instant, bigger, Results with very little or no more effort on your own. Getting into alignment with God can help you to essentially ride the EAC to where he's leading you. And oftentimes our belief of it has to be hard. I need to, to struggle to get to the top of the mountain. I'm not telling you that it's going to be like a cakewalk every time. But what I'm telling you is that if you subscribe to the belief that the only way to get to the top is to struggle. The only way to be successful is to endure years, months, you know, of, of painstaking work, then you will 100% prove yourself right because your belief will create that life. But if I can ask you to just open up your minds to believe that what is normal does not necessarily mean that it's natural. What is normal does not mean that it's natural. You see, it's normal for us to say that I need to, you know, work 24-7 in order to build a successful business as an entrepreneur. Yet, if I ask you, do you know of entrepreneurs? Have you heard of them? That, I mean, dude, there's there's a guy who wrote the book, The 4-Hour Workweek. It's a great book on time management and, and hacks to, to get the most out of your day. Like, it's possible. 
So if you believe that it's the only way to do it, then you are going to prove yourself right because your brain is only going to look for the evidence in the outside world to match that. But if instead you're like, okay, like if I can just get into flow with God, he is promising me peace. He's promising me. He says, take yourself upon my yoke. And I just, guys, like it doesn't have to be burdensome and hard all the time. What happens when you want to really align yourself, you're going to recognize that God placed a desire in your heart. And then you're going to have the the faith of a mustard seed to know with expectation and thanksgiving that his promise to you is on its way to you. And therefore, you are going to get into aligned, inspired action that is consistent with that reality. And it helps you to know what you're supposed to be doing. And I've learned, and this is one of the things that I get to teach inside of Spiral Up, is how to discern every day on my to-do list. Should I do this, Lord, or is that for another day? Please take the things off my list that are not for me today. Please add the people, the things, the energy, the skill set that I need today to do everything that you want me to do. And I'll even ask him before I start each new task. Lord, is this for me today? And then I ask him to give me his supernatural ability to do the best I can with the time that I have. Knowing what you want, expecting it with Thanksgiving, that doesn't mean that I'm like a two-year-old toddler saying, I want this and I'm going to have a fit if I don't get it. That's not what I'm saying. It's saying that, Lord, I trust your promise. And I'm going to persistently believe that it's on its way to me. And I am going to do what I need to do to make my end of the bargain. It's so much easier when we can get into flow with the Lord. Now, one of the things I already mentioned, um, Dr. Susan Jeffers and, you know, her book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. And it was so can, interesting because she had a whole chapter on positive thinking. And she was like, um, you know, it's so funny because people will tell her when she talks about positive thinking that that's not realistic. Like you can't just, you know, expect things to work out. You guys, like I literally have a bracelet on and it's, it's, um, it says S J W D F no. So, Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. O F M. Yeah. Shit just works out for me. I remind myself of that because I expect that it will. And so that's positive thinking, right? And so people will say, well, that's not realistic. Michelle, that's not realistic. But what's so fascinating, and she brought up this point in the book, is that 90% of what we worry about never actually happens. That means that less than or up to 10% of a time that's even correct. So how is, how is worrying, how is thinking the worst case scenario any more accurate or realistic than being positive about it and expecting that it's going to work its way out? There's an automatic assumption that, you know, it's, it's unrealistic to be positive. But friends, like just because I repeat it and make it normal does not mean that it's natural. We have to get in in beautiful harmony with the laws of the universe. It's like, okay, so I'm going to give you an example. I I grew up on a farm, right? So my dad would plant um, corn and beans. That's what what we raised in Minnesota, okay? My dad had to know that if he planted seeds to grow beans, then that's what he would expect. He also had to know that he had to plant – in the spring, he couldn't plant those seeds in the winter. He couldn't plant those seeds in the fall. He had to get in in harmony with the laws of nature. And he would expect then what he planted would come to fruition. But if he were to, to try to plant corn and expect beans, that's not going to happen. If he planted the wrong season, that's not going to happen. So get into alignment with the promise that it doesn't have to be hard. 
And so I call this, okay, so like um, this is a, a kind of a, a subset really off of a lot of the universal laws, but one being the law of attraction, which basically says that I am going to see my vision for what I desire. And remember, again, if God places on your heart, it's it's something that's going to help the the overall well-being of, of people, not just you, right? And so I'm like, okay, this this dream that I have is going to help make this ripple effect of, of kingdom impact. So I know that it's from you, Lord. And I am going to expect that it's going to happen. And I'm going to act as if it's already there. So if I know, <clears throat> for example, that I am going to be on stage in front of thousands of people, I am going to carry myself in a way that is consistent with that woman. That means that I am going to apply for the TEDx. That it means that I'm going to you know, raise my hand when I'm given an opportunity. That means I'm going to go to, you know, drive to Minneapolis an hour and a half away to attend um, the National Speakers Association trainings. That means I'm going to take aligned action as if it's already on its way to me. And I'm going to expect it because the Lord gave me that vision. And I am going to do everything that I can that's in alignment with that version of myself. Maybe you're in network marketing and you imagine that you are the person who's walking across the stage. What does that person, you know, how does she carry herself? What does she do when she doesn't feel like it? What does she do when she's scared? How does she pick up the phone? What kind of training does she do? How does she show up live on video, right? And you start to just take on this reality so vividly that you're like, I cannot imagine life any other way. I call this purposeful delusion. And I want to bring that up because I know that it sounds crazy. If you are making no money, but in your heart, you know that you're supposed to have a multi-million dollar business because you know that's going to help so many people. And you're putting wealth back in the hand of the kingdom, right? And you get up and you're like, oh, like... Of course, this is going to happen. Like, of course, it's on its way to me. Of course, my dream clients are on their way to me. I mean, be, when I start, first started my, my retreat, before I had anybody sign up, I just knew it was going to settle out. Of course, it was going to. And I kept putting myself out there just with this expectation that the right people are going to be there. I didn't get stressed about it. I just like purposefully delusion of that it was already full, act as if it was already full. Guess what? It has been every single time. People might think you're Pollyanna. People might think that that's not being realistic. But in this universal law, the law of obedience, he reminds us that just because it's normal does not mean it's natural. Purposeful delusion is in alignment with the law of vibration. It's in alignment with the law of attraction purposeful delusion of just expecting that shit's going to work out for you. Purposeful delusion that everything that you want to need is on its way to you right now. Rock solid belief, knowing that it doesn't have to be hard, that you don't have to struggle, that it's possible that everything that you've been praying for is on its way to you. That, my friend, is natural. That's in alignment with the natural laws of the universe. Yes, you might have a spouse, a friend, a coworker who say that's not normal. You're being you're being delusional. Guess what, guys? I would rather be na in natural flow than be normal, which is most likely $10,000 in credit card debt. I when I was doing research for my TEDx talk, I found that 47% of Americans would not wish their job on their worst enemy. What? Why are we not living our best life? Why are you stuck trying to be freaking normal? Why do you want to be miserable in your in your day job? Why do you want to have you know all this debt? Why do you want to to not feeling good in your skin and and 
just at the end of the day feeling satisfied, whatever the case may be, that's normal. I don't want to be normal, guys. I want to be in natural flow. So I subscribe to the pur purposeful delusion. I subscribe to the Pollyanna thinking. I subscribe to the fact that I know that the Lord has brought me to this place and that I am excited to see it come to fruition. And I want the same for you guys. So if you want to learn how to tap into the universal laws, you want to learn how to, to hear and trust the Lord's guidance, if you want to learn how to just know with expectation and thanksgiving that it's on its way to you, if you want to understand what your dream life is supposed to look like because you're tuning into his, his insight, if you want to know how to just be happier, then you need to click the link below and let's get a, a success diagnostic call on the record, okay? On the books, on the calendar, you know what I mean? And I'll tell you which part of my Spiral Up program is going to be the best fit for you based on your goals, your budget, the time commitment. I'm not about selling you something. I'm about serving you and I want to make sure that it's the right fit. But I will tell you that this is going to be a game changer and it's going to get you out of the hustle for the sake of hustling. It's time, friend. It's, it's time. All right, you guys, I hope that you had a revelation during this episode and would love to invite you to reach out to me on any of the social media channels. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if this is a harder concept for you. Let me know if this is something that you've sub subscribed to for a long time and, and what is the benefit of your purposeful delusion, right? All right, you guys, I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. So much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave a review. Each honest review helps me spiral up so that I can serve you even better. Whether you're feeling a lack of impact, income, or time freedom, or perhaps you're just ready for massive momentum in your business, let's chat. Apply for a breakthrough call so that you can gain clarity. Identify what's holding you back and make a plan to spiral up. Head on over to im-lifebydesign.com backslash breakthrough or access the link in the show notes. For immediate support, log into our community, The Better Club. We focus on inspiration, tactical guidance, and support. This is a community that wants to be better, do better, and have better in life and in business, and we're going to help you do the same. Let's spiral up, friends.